In this video we shall continue discussing keys. All these keys types we've seen in the first video and now we shall discuss these types and some more. As it was mentioned in the previous video, primary key together with foreign key are used to make relationships. That looks the following way. We have a parent relation with a primary key and we have a child relation with its own primary key and a foreign key. And that foreign key references the primary key of the parent relation. That's how foreign key works. With recursive foreign key we have the following situation. We have a relation with primary key, but the foreign key is also here. It is in the same relation and references its own primary key. That's how it looks like in details. So we have a parent relation and a child relation, so a payment belongs to an employee. We have primary key here, we have primary key here, but we have foreign key here. And that foreign key references the primary key of the parent relation. So we can see that these values are duplicates of this one. These values are duplicates of this one. So that's how relationship between relations works. In case we have to store in a relational database such hierarchical structure, we have to use recursive foreign key. So that's the table, the primary key here, the foreign key here. It references its own primary key and we can see that this page is a sub page of this one. And for instance, this AdWords page is a sub page of contacts. We may see it here, AdWords sub page of contacts, while contacts is a sub page of main page. Yes, here it is. So that's how recursive foreign key works. Of course, reality looks different than theory. There are no super key, candidate key and alternate key in reality. There are only primary keys that may be simple or compound, natural or surrogate. There are foreign and recursive foreign keys, of course. And instead of alternate keys, there are unique indexes that may be simple or compound and they are always natural. So there are no surrogate or intelligent unique indexes. Never. It would be madness. How to create a key using SQL query? For simple natural key while creating a table, we may use such syntax. We are adding a constraint, that's primary key, and we name a field of this table. So this field becomes the primary key of the table. If we want a surrogate primary key, we firstly have to add artificially some field and make it primary key as it was shown on the previous slide. But, but, we absolutely have to add unique constraint on that field that should be unique. Because in the previous example, this field was the primary key, but now it's not. Because here is the primary key. But this field is just a unique one. To create a compound natural primary key, we have to use the same syntax and list those fields we need with comma as separator. But please remember that it's crucial what field you should place first. Once again, a DBMS may use the first field or both fields for quick search but it can never use in single mode the second, the third and so on fields. So the first is crucial here. To create a foreign key we have to have two tables. The first one is parent table, the second is child table. Each of these tables have their own primary keys. So this is primary key and this is primary key. Then in the child table we have to create a field that should be the foreign key. And then we use the following syntax. We are altering child table, adding constraint with some name, foreign key, 
naming a field for a foreign key, that's our field, person. It references parent table, employee, here it is, its field ID, here it is. And here are some cascade operations, we shall discuss them in the next videos. On the schema the result looks like this. This is our parent table, child table, this is the foreign key, this is the relationship using these fields, and this relationship is of one to many type, so here is one, here is many. To create a recursive foreign key we also have to create a table, make a primary key there, add special field that should be then the foreign key, and also use the same syntax, we are altering that table, adding some constraint named foreign key for this field, it references the same table, it has several cascade operations properties. Please be patient, we shall discuss them soon. Meanwhile, we shall open our favorite Sparks Enterprise Architect and review some live demo. Here in the notes you may see that SQL code from the slides. And now we shall achieve the same result as shown in these notes. Let's start with this table. We have to make a simple natural primary key here. We shall open features, columns, click that field that should be primary key and check this checkbox primary key. And that's literally all. Here we have natural primary key for our table. Here we have to add surrogate primary key. Ok, let's start with it. Once again, features, columns, we have to add a field, id, we have to make it integer, make it primary key, we can make it auto-incrementable in order for DBMS to generate values for this field, we can make it unsigned because we rarely have negative values for primary keys, so we can double the range of available values. And now we can click close and that's almost done. If you don't like that the primary key is at the bottom, you may once again open the columns and holding control key press the arrow up key, so here it is, it moves up, bubbles up. And that's the result. The next one, here we have to have natural compound primary key. Ok, let's do it once again, opening features, columns. Here we may not make this field auto-incrementable, that's natural, not surrogate. But we may make it unsigned, that's ok. Making the checkbox here. And the department is the next field in this primary key, so making the checkbox here also. Let's close it. And now we see a primary key consisting of two fields. That's ok. But did you notice that we've forgotten something here in this table? Once we've created a surrogate primary key, we have to add an index for that old primary key field, the password field. So, once again opening features columns, clicking constraints, adding that constraint with usual unq prefix here, here's the name, by default it's index, but it has to be unique, we've switched it, choosing passport, that's ok, that's all. Now these three tables are ready, and we are moving to foreign key creation. First of all, we have to prepare our tables, have to do something with them, open features columns, id, primary key, auto incremention, unsigned property, passport, unq passport, unique, passport here, close, ok, that table is ready. Now this one, features, columns, 
id primary key auto increment unsigned the data type of this field the foreign key should be exactly the same as the data type of the primary key that means it has to be unsigned but not auto incremental because auto incremental property is not a data type property it's just a behavior of dbms so unsigned yes auto increment no so the table is also ready and now we have to create an association we shall use this tool click then we click the child table and hold the mouse and move it to parent table then release the mouse so such window should appear okay parent table good primary key of parent table good child table good the foreign key is not good we shall switch it to person and we may adjust cascade operations for instance we shall set on delete cascade on update cascade to okay here it is in case you don't like such a view of relationships you may switch it to uml one go to design menu manage diagram properties connectors connect orientation and switch to uml 2.1 okay now that looks the same like on the slides so these two tables and the foreign key are ready too and the last one let's adjust the table first once again columns primary key auto increment unsigned parent that's our foreign key integer okay unsigned not after increment close almost done the only thing left is to make a connection once again association click here click and release and we see parent sitemap id good child sitemap but not id but parent cascade operations why don't we choose the same on delete cascade on update cascade okay and we may move these labels somehow to sides in order to make this more visible here's the result and that's all in the next video we shall discuss relationships that are obviously built on keys